Imagine a spacecraft gliding through the void without a single drop of fuel. It makes no sound for there is no air to carry it. Yet it accelerates smoothly and constantly, defying the darkness. This is not a scene from a science fiction movie. This is the potential future promised by a revolutionary technology. It is called Maxwell Chikambutso's propulsion. And it could be the key that finally unlocks the universe for humanity. For centuries, we have looked up at the stars with a profound sense of wonder. We have dreamed of walking on other worlds. We have imagined meeting other forms of life. We have fantasized about becoming a truly interstellar species. But these dreams have always crashed against a brutal, physical reality. That reality is distance. The cosmos is unthinkably, terrifyingly vast. Consider our closest neighboring star system, Alpha Centauri. It is a mere 4.37 light years away. That sounds deceptively close. In human terms, it is an impossible chasm. With our fastest current propulsion technology, a mission to Alpha Centauri would take tens of thousands of years. A human lifetime would be a fleeting instant in such a journey. Generations would be born, live, and die inside a metal hull, never knowing a world other than their ship. The dream of interstellar travel becomes a dystopian nightmare under these conditions. The problem, fundamentally, is propulsion. We are still, in many ways, prisoners of the same basic technology that launched Sputnik. We rely on reaction engines. Whether chemical or ion, the principle is the same. You throw mass out the back of your spacecraft to push it forward. This is Newton's third law in action. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. It works, but it is brutally inefficient. To go faster, you need to carry more fuel. But that fuel itself has mass. So you need even more fuel to push that fuel. This creates a vicious cycle known as the tyranny of the rocket equation. The vast majority of a rocket's mass at launch is just propellant. This confines us to short, expensive hops within our own solar system. A mission to Mars, for instance, becomes a multi-year, incredibly risky endeavor solely because of propulsion limitations. We are like early sailors clinging to the coastline, terrified of the open ocean. But what if we could build a ship that didn't care about the wind or the currents? What if we could invent an engine that required no propellant at all? This is the audacious claim at the heart of Maxwell Chikambutso's work. He is an inventor from Zimbabwe who has captured attention and controversy in equal measure. He claims to have developed a new form of electromagnetic propulsion. The core principle is as elegant as it is revolutionary. Instead of ejecting mass, his system allegedly manipulates electromagnetic fields in a novel way. It is said to create a propulsive force directly from electrical energy. Think of it like a fan pushing air in a room. The fan doesn't eject its own parts to move, it interacts with the medium around it. Chikambutso's technology, in theory, does something similar with the quantum vacuum or the fabric of space-time itself. It purportedly creates an asymmetric force, a push against the very universe. No fuel is burned. No mass is expelled. Just pure, direct conversion of electricity into thrust. If this is true, it shatters the rocket equation into irrelevance. The implications are so profound they are difficult to fully grasp. Let's start with the most immediate one, the complete transformation of travel within our solar system. A spacecraft equipped with such an engine would not need to carry gigantic fuel tanks. Its mass would be dedicated to payload, to people, to science, to habitats. A trip to Mars would no longer be a nine-month ordeal dictated by orbital mechanics. It could become a matter of weeks, or even days. The ship could accelerate continuously for the first half of the journey, then flip and decelerate for the second half. This would create artificial gravity inside the vessel, making the journey infinitely healthier for astronauts. The moon would become a suburb of Earth, a quick commute away. We could establish a permanent, thriving presence on Luna with ease. Asteroid mining would become a practical, profitable industry. We could ferry vast quantities of precious metals and water ice from the asteroid belt to Earth orbit. This would provide the raw materials to build cities in space. It would end resource scarcity on our home planet. But this is just the beginning, the warm-up act for the main event. 
The true revolution of Maxwell's propulsion lies in its potential for interstellar travel. Remember that multi-millennia voyage to Alpha Centauri? With a constant, fuel-less acceleration, that timeline collapses. Let's be conservative. Imagine a spacecraft that can sustain a comfortable one gravity of acceleration. This would provide Earth normal gravity for the crew throughout their trip. After just one year of this constant acceleration, the ship would be approaching the speed of light. The laws of relativity would begin to seriously distort time. For the crew on board, the journey would feel much shorter. A trip to Alpha Centauri could be completed in a subjective time of just a few years. A journey to stars dozens of light years away could be undertaken within a single human lifetime. The galaxy, all 400 billion stars of it, would suddenly be within our reach. We are no longer talking about generational ships. We are talking about exploration ships, where the same people who leave Earth arrive at the destination. This changes the psychological and sociological dynamics completely. Humanity would become an interstellar species, not just in name, but in practice. We could send probes to every promising exoplanet we have discovered. We could look at the faint specks of light from the TRAPPIST-1 system and say, let's go there. We could send scientists to study the enigmatic dimming of Tabby's star up close. We could search for life not with telescopes, but with boots on the ground, or rather, on the alien soil of a world like Proxima Centauri b. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence would enter a new, active phase. We wouldn't just be listening, we would be visiting. This technology would also solve one of the biggest puzzles of interstellar travel, energy. A constant one-gravity burn requires an immense amount of power. Where would it come from? The most logical partner for this propulsion system is a compact, high-output nuclear fusion reactor. Some theoretical models even suggest the propulsion system itself could tap into zero-point energy or other speculative sources. While this remains in the realm of theory, it highlights that the power problem, while immense, is separate from the propulsion problem. Solving one opens the door to solving the other. Now, let's dream a little bigger. Let's talk about the societal and philosophical impact. The discovery of a habitable or even terraformable world would be the most significant event in human history. With Maxwell's propulsion, colonizing such a world becomes a real, tangible project. We could send fleets of colony ships, each carrying thousands of people. They would carry the genetic diversity needed to start a new branch of humanity. They would bring the tools, the knowledge, and the spirit to build a new Earth. This would be the ultimate insurance policy for our species. No single catastrophe, whether natural or self-inflicted, could wipe out humanity. We would no longer have all our eggs in one planetary basket. This expansion would also trigger a cultural and scientific renaissance unlike any other. Each new colony world would develop in its own unique way, shaped by its new environment. We would see the emergence of new art, new philosophies, new forms of government, all born under alien suns. The exchange of ideas between stars, though limited by the speed of travel, would enrich humanity beyond measure. Science would leap forward. Imagine having entire planets as laboratories. We could study alien ecosystems or seed them with life from Earth. We could test physical theories under conditions impossible to recreate at home. The very act of navigating between stars would force us to master the intricacies of general relativity and perhaps discover new physics altogether. Of course, this golden future is not without its shadows and its challenges. We must address the immense skepticism that surrounds Maxwell Chikumbutso's claims. The mainstream scientific community has, for the most part, dismissed his demonstrations. The physics he describes seems to violate the conservation of momentum, a cornerstone of modern science. His devices have not undergone independent, rigorous, peer-reviewed verification. This is a critical point. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And thus far, that evidence has not been presented in a way that convinces the scientific establishment. There are also serious engineering hurdles. Scaling a small demonstrator into a full-sized interstellar engine is a monumental task. Managing the power requirements is another. And then there are the human questions. Who gets to go to the stars? 
Is it only the wealthy and powerful? Do we risk exporting our conflicts and our prejudices to virgin worlds? The ethical implications of contacting less advanced intelligent life are staggering. The prime directive from Star Trek would cease to be science fiction and become a necessary framework for survival. We would also have to confront the psychological impact of interstellar travel. The time dilation effect means an astronaut on a decades-long journey might return to an Earth centuries older. They would be a stranger in their own land, a time traveler in the most profound sense. Their friends and family would be long dead. The society they knew would be ancient history. This is a sacrifice of almost unimaginable magnitude. The road ahead for this technology is long and uncertain. The first step must be absolute, transparent, and rigorous validation. The physics must be explained and replicated by independent teams across the world. If it works, then we must pour resources into understanding why it works. This would be a paradigm shift on par with the discovery of quantum mechanics. It would rewrite textbooks and force us to rethink our understanding of the universe. The investment required would be global, a modern-day Apollo program but for all of humanity. The timeline is impossible to predict. If the technology is real, we might see the first prototype interplanetary ships within a few decades. Interstellar missions would likely follow a century or more later, as we solve the ancillary problems of life support, radiation shielding, and closed-loop ecosystems. But the journey of a thousand light-years begins with a single, fuel-less thrust. So, let us conclude with a vision. Picture a ship, the Icarus II. It is not a rocket. It is a vessel, sleek and beautiful, designed for the long dark. At its heart is a humming reactor, feeding power to the graceful, silent engine nacelles. It carries no fuel, only knowledge and hope. It lifts from Earth, not on a pillar of fire, but on a whisper of force. It accelerates, smoothly and surely, leaving the inner planets behind in a matter of days. It passes the orbit of Pluto, and then the Kuiper Belt, and then the Oort Cloud. It is now in interstellar space, the first human-made object truly bound for the stars. The crew looks back at the sun, now just a particularly bright star among many. They look forward into the infinite black, towards a destination no human eye has ever seen. They are not prisoners of their fuel supply. They are masters of their destiny. They are the vanguard, the first of many. They carry with them the hopes, the dreams, and the spirit of a species that refused to be bound by its cradle. This is the future that Maxwell Chikambutso's propulsion dares to imagine. It is a future where the universe is not a barrier, but an ocean. It is a future where humanity is not a single planet species, but a galactic civilization. The technology may be controversial. The path may be difficult. But the dream is worth pursuing. For in reaching for the stars, we may finally reach our true potential. The engine is silent. The journey is just beginning.